Oh, I look like something off a little else in the prairie with my hair like that. This is what I have to deal with. Hello, plum people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley, and I like to take science and apply it to all things plums, both indoors and outside. And this video was completely spurred by you guys. On the last video, you guys asked about whether or not you could vacuum seal seeds inside of jars and those plastic vacuum sealers, you name it. Um, and because of that, I thought I have to do a video on this. It seems like either there's a lot of people doing this already or debating doing it. And there's a way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it. Uh, there's right and there's a wrong way to do this. So we're gonna talk about that here today. Now I am using a study for this video. I'm citing a study and that study was done by a university I'm gonna absolutely butcher the name of. Wedgen Jin Wedgigin Wedgigin University. I'll put it here. Um, and they did a study on this. It was published in Plant Genetic Resources Journal, is where I found it in. But regardless, it did yield some pretty cool results. Now, their purpose or their backstory is they were trying to figure out a way that seeds could be stored in the tropics with ease. So if you did not know in tropical environments, the warmer it is, the worse the seeds store. And it's because the inside of the seed is very, very active and kind of eating up all the starches and enzymes inside of there. On the other side, like I mentioned in the last video, if we store our seeds nice and cool, either in the fridge, the freezer, the cold room, in the basement, in the garage, you name it, they're going to store better. The other factor is humidity. Tropics are also very humid and warm. This is like worst case scenario for seeds. So you would never want to store seeds in this room that's very high humidity and pretty darn high, which is my tropical plant room. However, in the basement, it's a little bit drier. It's a little bit cooler. That's an ideal condition. So what I will say here, uh, just first off is, well, maybe I shouldn't say this. I don't, this is top secret between me and you. Watch CSIS come knock on my door here pretty quick. But I know, I have connections to the seed vault. <laughs> One of the largest seed vaults in the world. Like it's, like it's in the top three. But anyway, so inside of that, the seeds themselves are stored in paper bags or in envelopes, combination of the two. They are not vacuum sealed. They're not stored in glass. They're not stored in plastic. They are literally kept in envelopes. And inside of those envelopes, it's like a giant filing cabinet of them. They're in a fridge, a ginormous fridge. The fridge is like the size of the house type thing. Um, and what they do with these seeds is they don't just set them and forget them and then come find them 25 years later and grow them type thing. They're continually cycling these seeds. And this is why I stress this so much. You can't just get seeds, put them in the fridge or the freezer and forget about them. What these seed vaults do is they have these rooms. It's literally probably about the size of this room. It has lights, it's AC controlled, heat controlled, self-watered, fertilized, you name it. And inside of there, they grow their vegetable or their wheat or their grain. They harvest from that, they put the seeds back in storage. And they will repeat this cycle however long they know that the actual seed storage for that plant is in that environment. So if they know it will begin to lose viability after five years, they will plant them four years at, at year number four. If they know the seeds only store for a year, that they will do the exact same thing. They will go in and they will, every six months, they will grow a batch of those seeds. And that's just to keep a constant viable supply of that DNA. The purpose is a DNA bank is what it comes down to. It's not necessarily just for seeds to feed the rest of the world. It's to keep the genetic um, coding, if you will. So with that being said, that is what like the big bad boys do. <laughs> now, from the other perspective of trying to find new ways to store seeds, this is always a hot topic and that's what this university is choosing to do. So this university and all these universities have recognize that humidity, temperature, and oxygen are the three things that affect seed storage. We're able to control these two very easily. The last one, they're not totally sure how to control. Now there's a reason for this. A majority of people who grow seeds, keep seeds, all that fun stuff, 
continually think that the seed, because it's a living organism, needs oxygen. If that seed does not have oxygen, how is that living organism or the organisms within that seed going to survive and live without the O2? So you can see some validity there. However, a seed exposed to oxygen begins to oxidize. That's what ages the seed. So the oxygen feeds the microbes or the enzymes or all that fun stuff inside the seed through the little seed belly button. And then it causes that seed to degrade despite the fact that it has not yet germinated. So if we can control all three factors, we could again really substantially increase the life of those seeds. So the study looked at celery seeds specifically. Now celery seeds are not the greatest for preservation. This is one seed that I do not store. I get new ones every single year. I don't buy them early in the year. I buy them literally just before and I'm about to plant them because they just don't store very well. If you combine these with priming of the seed, the seed storage is literally pretty much zero. It's gone to nil, none. So one way, what we call priming, is uh, we expose the seed to water, which gets the juices flowing, if you will, inside the seed, and then we put them into storage right away. And we do it before the root is exposed or anything like that. And you can get prime seeds. You can purchase these on an egg scale, um, but you can also buy them just regularly or you can prime at home. Now the reason for this is because it reduces the chances of dampening off, rotting in the ground, or just reduced germination rates because of unstable soil moisture. There's a number of different reasons for it and it works very, very good. However, celery seeds are the worst seeds to prime because they only survive about three weeks. After three weeks, the germination rate just plummets down to absolute nothing. So that is the seeds they chose to work on because it allows us to replicate the study very, very quickly without huge amounts of time in between. So, I mean, keep in mind that the study was done with very sensitive seeds, not the cream of the crop, the best seeds ever um, for storage, but it allowed us to really quickly get results on whether or not this is going to work. You would have to experiment on your own or other university research groups, whatever, would have to experiment with this with specific types of seed to figure out, you know, ideally with each type of seed what works best. So they did this three different ways. The first way that they ran this study is they primed and then they just left the seed. They put it into regular cold temperature moisture storage below 30% at an ideal temp. The second way they did this is they primed and then vacuum sealed, just sucked the air out of the, the seed. Well, I think they put, yeah, they did put desiccant in there as well, um, or oxygen absorber, not a desiccant. They put an oxygen absorber in there, they vacuum sealed it, and then they put it in storage. The third way they did this was they put a desiccant, an oxygen absorber, vacuum sealed those babies up, and put them into storage. The temperature and the humidity, as long as they didn't have the desiccant, was the same. So what they found was the ones just stored regularly um, at the normal humidity, normal temperature, normal oxygen levels. After three weeks, they did not germinate. They just did not work at all. The ones that they put into the vacuum sealer with the oxygen absorber, they did not germinate either. They did horrible when it came to planting. The ones that did the best were the ones that had the desiccant, so what takes away the moisture, combined with the oxygen absorber in the ideal temp. Those ones did actually pretty darn good, which would suggest that vacuum sealing with an oxygen absorber and a desiccant can increase the longevity of the seed. However, they do not know yet what the correct humidity percentage needs to be, if it should be absolute zero, 5%, 10%, 30%, they don't know. All they know is that it does not work if it's 30 um, or whatever it was in that package. What they do know though, is that it didn't work when there wasn't a desiccant added and there was still some moisture present. Things kept on moving despite the fact that oxygen wasn't there. They know for darn sure the presence of oxygen, humidity and temperature it just did not work whatsoever. So with that being said, if you're going to do this, if you want to vacuum seal your seeds for long-term storage, you need to make sure the humidity is low and that the oxygen is actually absorbed. So to do this correctly, you want to use a desiccant 
and you want to use an oxygen absorber. So a silica gel pack and then the oxygen absorbers you purchase and then vacuum seal it and still store it in a cold spot. Now, how long it extends the seed's life, still to be determined. There's not much research on this um, and kind of all that fun stuff. But I wanted to say this because I know it sounds like some of you are doing it. So if you're just vacuum sealing them without an oxygen absorber and without the desiccant, you may actually be reducing the life of your seed ultimately. So you wanna add both at the same time. But you guys have to let me know in the comments down below if you vacuum seal, if you've noticed it's harmed your germination or if it's worked out for you. It may be that your seed itself, when you go to oxygen absorb it, like when you get it from the retailer, it's already very, very dry. Um, and so it just works out in your favor, it works out good. I personally am not going to vacuum seal. I'm just gonna do my regular cardboard box type container in a cold room type scenario uh, because that's what works for me. But I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye. Today's video sponsor is Ketonic, 100% organic soil amendment sourced from sustainable peat. It's Omni listed and certified by EcoCert Canada. Ketonic helps your garden grow and thrive by promoting microbial activity and naturally replenishing the soil health. Get 15% off your bottle of Ketonic with the discount code in the description.